Hi, and welcome to the Sask Music Indigenous History Month interview series. My name is LJ Tyson, and I'm joined today by my friend Valhalla. How's it going? It's going all right. It's been a day, I'll tell you. <laughs> That'll be behind scenes stuff, right? Yeah. B roll. No. <laughs> then as you were coming in, a random rainstorm came and out. And now, look, it's sunny and just picturesque, you know? Beautiful. It was like one of the, it's like one of the rain cloud is just like right over you as you're like walking. <laughs> yeah. uh, Hilarious. So good. <laughs> There's so much I want to talk to you about. Obviously, you know, you've been um, active in the music industry for quite some time now, but you recently released um, a project kind of during COVID called Gravel Roads. And this project had been a long time coming, right? Oh, yeah. Like it started off in my brain um, probably 10 years ago now. And I was trying to do three albums at once where I could sort of like split them up by genre and then go like even further you know into those genres because I've always been a lion straddler a bit and genre bender and like people were um always kind of having debates about what genre I was and so I just thought as a creative experiment that would be a good way to be able to like really push certain things and for heavy stuff get really heavy and for rootsy stuff get like very you know fiddle and banjo and stuff on there um but it became such a giant undertaking that i actually ended up narrowing it down to just two albums and uh so the first one came out in 2017 it was called a walk on part in the war and that was the rock the rock and roller and so gravel roads is uh a lot more uh, I'd say, you know, maybe old-timey country, Americana, folk, um, roots, you could say, singer-songwriter, um, encompassed on that on that one, so. It's an amazing album. Thank you. I mean, the songwriting is just so beautiful on it. What was it like to release a record during COVID? It was just, I mean, I think I just got, because I was waiting, and I was like, well, I'll just, you know, wait this out. It'll only be a... And, and I waited and I waited. And eventually it was like, well, now I've been sitting on it for over a year. And like, so it just was, I had to just let go of expectations and that sort of pattern you go through of like record release. Like, here's all the things I need to do and I need to tour. I need to... So I had to just let it go and be like, you know, this... Next, next one I can do all those things again, but this just, it needs to come out and it's going to just be online and there's not going to be a tour and, you know, just throw caution to the wind and put, at least get it out, you know. And I, and I think that it was also a time where, you know, a lot of people didn't have, we were all in lockdown, so it was hard for a lot of musicians to get albums out. So it just seemed like, you know, enter that space and, and keep the music flowing too because people still need music you know through all that we all needed lots of tunes to get us through <laughs> <I think. laughs> you had professionally changed your name for a minute there i was experimenting i'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> was that was that because of the the different genre i think so like i think that in a way i was think because because the valhalla thing had been born of um, when I when I first moved to Vancouver, you know, I left high school in the middle of uh, my grade 12 first semester and I was like, I, I, September 11th happened is what shook me basically. And I was like, there's no time like the present, present. And I just like left to Vancouver and uh, I wasn't dropping out. I still like tried to go to school there long, they had a bylaw. It was, anyway, um, at that time, you know, I had, I had gotten into that sort of Vancouver rock scene. I ended up playing in a three-piece kind of rock trio with um, some members of Five Alarm Funk, which was cool because, like, two of them, when they ended up leaving, two other members of Five Alarm Funk came in and started playing with me. And it was just, it was a really cool thing for rock and roll. And, and that's where that Valhalla name kind of uh, came from to kind of, like, give that alter ego get me out of my shell and and be willing to kind of like front a rock and roll band like that um but prior to that when i was 
when I was just young, I had put this folk album out that was just acoustic singer songwriter, and it was I used my full legal name, Valerie Ray McLeod, and um, this Gravel Roads album felt like this like throwback to that, you know, 20 years later. And, um, and I thought, you know, like maybe, maybe I do need to just put it out as me as, as a songwriter. And, but in the end, um, man, it was just impossible. It was like all the work of building yourself up for 20 years. Even if I say like, I'm going by Valerie Ray now, or what? People were like, Valhalla, what's up? <laughs> like, everybody was just like, Valhalla, Valhalla, Valhalla's playing. And I was like, no, this is, they're like, Valhalla. So I was like, what am I doing, you know? Well, it has become you, yeah. right? I mean, it has become your identity as an artist. And Yeah, don't you fight know, it, don't fight it. You know, if they, give the people what they yeah, want. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It means something to other people, too, that means. For sure. So I, re I respect that, and that's a lucky... I'm grateful to be in that position, you know. And it's a powerful, strong name. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, like, that's, there's a, like, my dad's, the McLeod side, they go all the way back to this guy, Olaf the Black, right? Because, like, there was Vikings that were coming to the Scottish Isles and, and doing Viking things, you know, <laughs> getting, getting in there and whatnot. So, um there, there was that kind of like connection in my family line, but I'm also just like this huge Led Zeppelin fan. That's my oh, I love Led that. Zeppelin tattoo. Yeah, I never noticed that. <laughs> and um, I remember like we were trying to find a name for the for the band out in Vancouver, and and like the drummer was like, we should be Val in the in the something something, you know. I think he said like, well, I won't even never mind. <laughs> it was something that I was like, ah, yeah. It's not gonna work and I just kept thinking like no this has got to be like this is heavy this is you know Led Zeppelin Metallica Motorhead like I'm thinking all these like and then I was reading a Led Zeppelin Hammer of the Gods it's a biography and I just remember at that time I turned the page and it just said Valhalla I'm coming which is a line from Immigrant Song and I was like there it is you know it's, and, and it served me well because it was something I could use solo and like have a, a name that's still my name, yeah. now. <laughs> but also, but also use as a band. And, um, you know, I've, I've never had sort of, uh, consistent people over time. I've worked with a lot of awesome musicians, been super lucky and traveling. I can get a pickup band and I can... You know, so it's it's just it's allowed me a lot of freedom in that too. So that's it. That's Valhalla for life now, I guess. I love it. <laughs> Speaking about names and identities, I mean anyone that follows you on social media has seen your journey with identity and you finding your indigenous background. I yeah. mean you're a proud Metis woman. Absolutely, I'm very proud. And you know, for me that's my mom's side of the family and it's it's all of the women in that side of the family because it's always been, for me, um, passed down through the women. Um, and, you know, it's something that I know for a lot of people, um, their families, they grew up where maybe they didn't know their families were Métis or maybe they knew, but they were told not to talk about it, you know, and that's something that is a very common story for for a lot of families. Um, I'm really lucky because my grandmother is 93, I believe, right now. Um, and she was told her whole life not to talk about that. Um, but because of the way a lot of uh, perceptions have changed, because of also just people now wanting to reclaim and they don't want to support, you know, racism and deny their family origin. Um, my grandmother now does speak of it and will um, tell me stories. And I've found all her family back in Selkirk in Manitoba and I've been able to talk with them and cousins. I've found so many cousins, my goodness. <laughs> 
which has just been such a blessing though, you know, and everybody's a musician, which is amazing. That's my, pretty cool. My cousin Craig wants to have a big family reunion at like the old property. He's got like the farm that's been in the family for like 120 years or something like that. And um, he wants to have a big music festival as part of that and I'm like well, I mean, yes! if you can just keep a music <laughs> festival and family why not that would be so awesome speaking yeah. of um family and music will your upcoming music be inspired by this this journey and absolutely this, yeah that's my biggest plan like in in the next like not immediate but for say the next year um because I'm in school right now I went back to school which is awesome uh, shout out GDI, but uh, <laughs> I um, I want to do an album next summer um, with all Métis musicians, and and that would involve family for sure. But also like I just know so many incredible musicians, and you know I think that we do have uh, a unique approach, a unique sound, and a unique story, and I want to make sure that. Uh, you know, we get more of that recorded and, and you know, shared amongst, amongst ourselves because, you know, a lot of my relatives are in Alberta, a lot are in Manitoba, even in BC. And like, I just, I think that um, it's something that we need to make sure we're keeping that connection too because there's a lot of, I'll say pressures right now, um, coming down on Métis people to be segregating into provinces. Um, and that's not coming from us. So I want to make sure we remember that, that we're a nation and we're all family. And, and I think music's a great way to do that. Music's the perfect way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, music, you could say a lot of harsh things in a great way. Yeah. You know what just I mean? Slide just slide <laughs> This is a hard question. If someone is, if you're to introduce your music to someone for the first time, what song are you showing them? Ooh. Tricky question. Yeah, I'm like, probably depends how I feel, how you that, feel day. that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know what? Like the, the song Gravel Roads from the Gravel Roads album, um, maybe it's a selfish one to pick because it's also like seven and a half minutes long. <laughs> But it was, I really, uh, I just really feel um, excited that I got to do that song because it was, uh, it was a co-write with a, a Texas songwriter, uh, Kyle Wieters. And he's actually, he's a, he's a road manager for the Randy Rogers band down in Texas. They're a great Texas band. And, but he's a great songwriter, just like road manager that like, has his songs up on SoundCloud or something and they just blew me away like so um he had he had his version of the gravel roads going and I said uh you know I'm really inspired by it and would you allow me to kind of work with it and do like a co-write with it and maybe add a verse and just kind of work with the arrangement and he's like go nuts you know and I was like what um, and, and so I did, and then I got to take that into the studio when I was down in Nashville with, with some friends that I've known a long time, uh, that used to be in this band called The Levies, uh, Dan Cohen on guitar and, uh, James Cook on, uh, the bass. They were both in The Levies, um, and, and James now plays bass for Luke Bryan, um, their drummer in that band. Uh, he's now Chris Stapleton's drummer, um, and and Dan's just like this amazing session guy in Nashville playing guitar for everybody. But um, then they brought in Derek was out with Chris or whatever, and and they work with um, this guy Kent Slucher, who's the drummer for Luke Bryan, and he's like a powerhouse. He's like just like wailing like John Bonham style, which yeah. I love. Um, so we did that. We did that song. Um, and like I said, it turned out to be like seven and a half minutes long, but it was all one take and it was the first time we ever played it, you know, and it just, it was such a cool experience. It wasn't nerve wracking. It wasn't 
spending 10 years on two albums and like, you know, like that one song was the last one added to the album and it literally took seven and a half minutes to make that record, that, that one song, right? So um, it was just such a cool experience and to get to play with like guys at that level and it was fun, you know, and it was like improvisational and there was a vibe, you know, so. Uh, you're like a musician's musician. Like, <laughs> you, like the amount of people you know and like their styles and things, it's cool to see someone appreciate. I'm, I think I'm a fan things. first, you know, I'm just, it's probably why I've never ma made any money. Because I, <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's not my focus. I'm yeah. like, I just want to, just let me play with that person. Just let me that's get what one I mean. chance to jam with Jennifer Batten. And, yeah. You know, like. like. The amount of people you cross paths with is just so, like, incredible. Like, and um, I know you always are more than willing to pass that, those skills and information on to an upcoming generation. I mean, just um, even through the way you share your music and the, it's always just such a, I don't know, very just like refreshing. Like people know what I'm talking about. Like you're saying, <laughs> I could sit here and talk with you all day, but they'll get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did a Corey once and it was a blast. It was like... so fun. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying, you guys. I'm like feeling like all selfish in this interview because I could literally talk to her all day. We could just let you into our just conversation. Good, yeah, we're just going to have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anywhere people can follow you on social media? Yes. Um, I, I use at Valhalla Music, so V-A-L-H-A-L-L-A. M-U-S-I-C as a handle on all the various socials. Um, I got to get my website back up. I, I took it down there because I ran out of money straight up. <laughs> honest. Honest. It's expensive but to keep the, a website yeah. up. I'm a student now. What? Yeah. I don't know. But, but all, that was ValhallaMusic.ca. I still own it. I'll get it back up. But for now, just at Valhalla Music on the, on the socials. You know. What is immediately next for you? What can people look forward to? Um, I'm going to put out um, a, a music video for one of the songs that's on Gravel Roads. It's called Tennessee Lights. Love that one. And I think that um, I'm hoping the Pure Country 92.7 folks are, we've been talking, they probably are going to help me premiere that one. But I guess I can't say for sure just yet. But yeah. um, hoping to put that out in August. And... Uh, and did a really cool video. Strangely, like we did it in the middle of the night down on Broadway in Nashville. So there wasn't much happening, no cars around, yes. nothing. So it was all empty, which was really weird at the time yeah. for Broadway. And then the pandemic happened. And then it was like, that's what it ended up being like yeah. down there. So um, it's it's weird. It's, it's, I guess, what do you call that? Life imitating art? Yeah. Something like that. Something but, like that. So I got to look for the new vid, YouTube. It's going to be good. And, that's a, <laughs> and it's a great song. And it's a great song. Check out Gravel Roads by Valhalla. Check out Valhalla in general. You guys go check out one of her shows. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.